Chapter 3. Lunch in the Library. The next day at school, Alex was still having a hard time digesting the conversation and the pizza from the night before. The news of her mother's new relationship was a heavy thing to process and did nothing to help the gloomy state she was already in. She felt like she was slowly losing control over everything in her life, and she hated it. Alex desperately needed someone to talk to, someone who wasn't her mom or her brother, but an outside source who could hug her and tell her everything was going to be all right. She needed her grandmother. She would have given anything just to see her face again. However, since that was impossible at the moment, Alex settled on seeing a form of her grandmother instead. At lunch, at lunch, she went to one of her favorite places in her world, the school library. Hi, Alex, the librarian said as Alex passed her desk. You'll be happy to know I just ordered a new set of encyclopedias. Really, Alex said? That's wonderful. She smiled for the first time all day. It faded a second later after she realized new encyclopedias was the most exciting news she had in weeks. Thank you for your enthusiasm, the librarian said. Earlier today, I told another student I was getting new encyclopedias. He asked me how long I've been in the hospital. Can you believe that? Times are definitely changing. They are, they sure are, Alex said under her breath. Alex went to the very last aisle of the books where the children's literature was kept. Students weren't allowed to check out these books as they were mostly used as references for the English class. From the top shelf, Alex pulled down an old book that was several hundred pages thick. It was exactly where she had left it on her last visit to the library. A treasury of classic fairy tales was written across its brown cover. It wasn't much to look at, and it didn't have nearly as much majestic charm as her grandmother's Land of Stories book, but it had become Alex's favorite book to visit in the library. She looked around to make sure no one was watching her. Besides the librarian, who was busy at her computer, she had the library to herself. She opened the book and flipped through the pages. She skimmed through the illustrations of Sleep and Beauty and Snow White, of Rapunzel and Red Riding Hood, and of Goldilocks and Jack and the Beanstalk. Surprisingly, they were accurate descriptions of the people she had met a year ago in the fairy tale world. Alex finally found Cinderella and came across the picture she wanted to see the most, an illustration of the fairy godmother. Alice couldn't help but chuckle underneath her breath every time she saw it. The author's version of the fairy godmother couldn't have been further from what her grandmother looked like. In this book, she was a tall and voluptuous woman with big lips, wings, long blonde hair, and a large golden crown. How, however inaccurate it was, it was technically still her grandmother, and that was all Alex needed to see. Hi, Grandma, Alex said quietly to the book. You look great. I like your crown and your wings. It's funny how different you look in every book I read. They are just dramatic interpretations. Or has your style changed over the years? The fairy godmother was just a young fairy living in the fairy tale world when she, saw, when she discovered there was another world. She was the first and only person in history of both worlds capable of traveling between the two at will. She never understood why she was given such a gift. Magic had always been a mind of its own. The world was in a very dark place during her first visits. It was the beginning of the Middle Ages, and war and plague were everywhere she looked. The fairy godmother told stories of her world to the children she met to brighten their spirits. The tales gave them such hope and joy that she decided to make it her life's work to spread the history of her world and theirs. The fairy godmother eventually enlisted other fairies, including Mother Goose and mo members of the fairy council, to travel secretly with their help and spread the stories, hence the name fairy tales. Given a bit of magic to a world that had little of its own, over time the fairies recruited other people, such as Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, to help keep those stories alive. The two dimensions operated on different time schedules. The fairy tale world moved at a much slower pace compared to the other world. The fairies tried to visit the other world as much as possible, but through only months would pass between visits in the fairy tale world, decades would have passed in the other world. It wasn't until Alex and Connor, the first children born to both worlds, were born that the dimensions began moving at the same pace. Alex and Connor were the links that held the two worlds together, and as Alex held the treasury of classic fairy tales in her hands, she could almost feel the power running through her veins. It was no wonder. 
they had loved fairy tales so their whole lives. Alex wondered if her grandmother had devoted that last year solely to spreading fairy tales around the world. Or had something bad happened in the fairy tale world? Grandma, I don't know what's going on, but I could really use you right now, Alex said to the book. Everything is changing. Everything is moving in directions I don't like. This whole growing up thing is a lot harder than I ever thought it would be. And not getting to see you makes it unbearable. Alex took another look around the library to make sure she was alone. She sh she hugged the book so tightly as she could, as tightly as she could without damaging it, and went her to the top of its spine. Please let me come back to the land of story, she said. Let me join you and the other fairies. If something has happened, let me help you. I know I can. Please just send me a sign. Let me know that you're okay. Alex held the book for a few moments more, hoping that maybe today would be the day she would be magically transported back into the world she loved so much. But to her dis disappointment, she stayed put in the library. Her whimpers didn't go entirely unnoticed, however. If hugging that one doesn't work, try one of these, said a voice from nearby. Startled, Alex dropped the treasury down the aisle, seated on the floor with a few stacks of books piled around him. Was Connor. Alex had completely messed up. <laughs> you scared me, Alex said. She was embarrassed, not knowing what he hadn't had heard her saying to the inanimate object. You're lucky I know you, otherwise I probably would have reported you to the school psychologist, Connor said with a mocking but loving smirk. What are you doing here? Alex asked him. She walked down the aisle closer to her brother and saw that the majority of books around him were also different storybooks of fairy tales. Same thing as you, apparently, Connor said, and then snickered himself. Although I didn't try again to first base with any of them or anything. Very funny, Alex said, and took a seat next to him. Is this your first time ever being in the library? Connor sighed and shrugged his shoulders. I've been in a bit of a funk today. I thought if I came here and flipped through a couple of these, I would feel better, he explained. Did it work, Alex said? For the most part, I'd say, Connor said. Why do you think that is? Well, Alex said, straining her headband. I read in a zoology book once that certain species of birds and insects that live in the trees will climb down and hide in the roots if they ever feel like their home is being threatened. Connor looked like looked at her sister like she was speaking with tongues. And how is that relevant to this topic? Because, Alex explained, our home is being threatened. Things are changing. So here we are in the library, reading old fairy tales. We return to our roots. Sure, Connor said, only half understanding her comparison. How can you remember that? But you can never remember the names of singers on the radio. My point is, Alex continued, sometimes all we need to see is very is a few familiar faces to make us feel comfortable again. Connor nodded. Well, I wouldn't say I saw any familiar faces, he said. He searched through his pile of books and pulled out a couple to show her. In this, the Egyptian version of Cinderella, Grandma is a hawk, he told her excitedly. And in this one, Grandma's not even in it. Cinderella gets her own shoe from a tree. Can you believe that? Like, a tree could give her a new dress, please. A complete stranger with a wand is much more believable. We should write letters of complaint, Alex said. Should we sign it as the grandchildren of the fairy godmother? Do you think they'll take it more seriously if we do? They both laughed. <laughs> Definitely, Connor said, or personal acquaintances of the long-lost charming prince. But no one has ever heard that one before. But the twins were silent for a moment, and their amusement faded to despair. I miss Froggy, Connor said. I must say, Froggy. There's not much we can do about it, Alex said. If Grandma wanted us to come back, she would tell us what was going on. Until then, I guess we'll have to keep hugging books. Great, Connor said sarcastically. I wonder what Dad would tell us if he was alive. I don't think there was a story even in his catalog that could help us go get through everything we're going through now. Alex had to think about it. Most of her dad's stories had been perfect in for the elementary school of Thelma Mas. But what advice would he give them now? I bet he would say that anyone can have a once upon a time 
or happily ever after. But it's the journey between them that makes the stories worth telling, Alex said. And how characters face the challenges and at hand it is what makes them heroes. Yeah, Connor said. Something like that. You're good at this. A high-pitched beep sounded as an announcement was made over the loudspeaker. Connor Bailey, please report to the principal's office. Connor Bailey, please report to the principal's office. Both the twins looked up and tore the speaker and then at each other. What did you do, Alex said? I don't know, Connor said with a gulp. He mentally rewound through the past four weeks of his life, thinking anything he had done that could warrant a trip to the principal's office, but found nothing. At least I don't think I did anything. Connor collected his things and put the library books back on the shelves. Well, wish me luck, he said to his sister. See me. See you after school, I hope. Alex stayed seated on the floor, discouraging thoughts filling her head. What would happen if she never saw her grandmother again? Would she become a weird book hugging lady who traveled from one library one library to the next? Would her future children believe her when she told them about her connections to the fairy tale world? The bell eventually rang, and Alex got to her feet. She picked up the treasury of classic fairy tales from where she had dropped it on the floor and decided to take one last look at the illustrations before heading to class. Alex turned to the same page she had been talking to before, and to her amazement, the illustration was completely different. Instead of the voluptuous woman with the wings and crown, it showed a petite woman with a kind smile and sky-blue sparkly robe. It was her grandmother. Alex looked around the library in a shock as a smile grew on her face. Her grandmother had just sent her a postcard. Alright, that is the end of chapter 3. I hope you enjoy the read of it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more of The Land of Stories, The Enchantress Returns. Or if you want to hear more books later on in the future. Also, if you want to send me any recommendations and any books you want me to read, just post any comments on any video that I have posted. And I hope you enjoy the read. Bye!